dear people watching and listening, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please support my channel by contributing to my Patreon account so that I can continue making such videos. Start of Chapter 6 Solving Controversy The Holy Quran is one huge miracle. It is a book of miracles which may be expounded from innumerable points of views. I have tried from some simple aspects to share with you that which I, as a layman, was enthralled with. There is no end to this research. I leave this task to my more learned brethren or the erudite scholars of Islam. May I live to see their efforts. Let me end with this, my final example for this short publication. Call to Swaziland A few years ago, a controversy arose in Swaziland. King Sobuza lost his queen-elect. The Christian church in the country began quibbling on the subject of the period of waiting before a man can remarry. It was not such a serious problem for discussion because the king still had eight more wives. So the topic changed to how long must a woman wait if her husband dies. As the debate was raging furiously in the tiny kingdom, the benevolent king ordered a synod of all the churches in the country to trash out the problem. Mr. Musa Borman, a Swazi brother who had embraced Islam, sought permission from the king to have his church, Islam, also represented in the debate. With the king's blessings, I too was honored to attend the discussion. One Sunday morning, in the king's kraal, representatives of the various dominations of Christianity gathered to arrive at some consensus on the period of widowhood. Speaker after speaker delivered his discourse. God Almighty had gifted the African. Each and every one is a potential Billy Graham or Jimmy Swaggart. At the end of each sermon, the audience applauded enthusiastically. The next speaker came and he brushed off his predecessor with the expression palish, meaning porridge, implying rubbish, garbage, and performed to resounding applause. From morning to evening, the performance went on. Around 5 p.m., my turn came. With the volume of the Holy Quran you see on the cover of this booklet, in my hands, I began. From morning till night, we have been fumbling for answers as to how long is a woman to wait before remarrying after the demise of her husband. And we have heard what the Old Testament says and what the New Testament says. And what the New Testament says and what the Old Testament says, but we have not yet got the answer, because the solution to our problem is in the Last Testament. The Last Testament was a bombshell for the Christian priests and preachers. They had never heard the expression the Last Testament in their lives. Quoting old and new, new and old will not help because the answer is in the Last Testament of God to mankind. I brandished the book above my head and read only the English of the Holy Quran. Chapter 2, verse 234. A reference which is very easy to remember. 2, 234. Just 2, 2, 3, 4. If any of you die and leave widows behind, they shall wait concerning themselves four months and ten days. When they have fulfilled their term, there is no blame on you if they dispose of themselves in a just and reasonable manner, and God is well acquainted with what ye do. Holy Quran, Surah Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 234 I asked the audience, Four months and ten days, do you need any interpretation? They all answered in chorus, No. I explained to the learned clergy the wisdom behind the period of four months and ten days in the preceding verses in this last and final testament of God. We are told about the period of waiting after divorce. Divorced women shall wait concerning themselves for three monthly periods. Holy Quran, Surah Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 228 This is in order to see that the marriage conditionally dissolved was likely to result in an issue, whereas in the case of widowhood, 
an extra period of one month and 10 days are prescribed. Very logical, everyone will agree. But what is miraculous about all this? Any wise man could have guessed these three months period after divorce and four months and ten days after the demise of the husband. Muhammad wasallam, guess is as good as anybody else's. This is true, but the proof that all this healthy useful teaching is not Muhammad's wasallam, handiwork is in the verse following the four months and ten days period. There is no blame on you if ye make an offer of betrothal or hold it in your hearts. God knows that ye cherish them in your hearts. But do not enter into a secret contract with them except in terms honourable. Nor resolve on the tie of marriage till the term prescribed is fulfilled. Holy Quran, Surah Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 235 God's Fingerprint do not resolve to the tying of the marriage knot till the fixed period of waiting is over. This is not Muhammad wasallam cleverness. This is the wisdom of the all-wise God. The omniscient creator knows the weaknesses of his creatures. Man in his greed and cupidity will take unfair advantage of the poor distraught widow. She has just lost her backbone and support the breadwinner. She has a number of little mouths to feed she has also perhaps lost her looks and value in the marriage market has diminished. She is likely to clutch at any straw. In her emotional, unsettled condition, when a predator makes the proposal, in her haste and insecurity, she might readily accept. The master psychologist, not Muhammad wasallam, is fully aware of all the snares laid by men. Hence the warning. No contract until the appointed term is fulfilled. The Iddat, period of waiting after divorce or after bereavement, is three months. Here she is given an extra 40 days to regain her equilibrium and equanimity. In the meantime, if suggestions of marriage had come, she would have the opportunity of discussing the matter dispassionately with her friends and relatives. She could avoid the pitfalls of a hasty acceptance with a large, drawn-out and painful development. Did Muhammad wasallam think and work out all these ramifications in the desert 1400 years ago? Alas, you give him too much credit. He is made to repeat again and again that the Quranic wisdom is not of his making. It is no less than an inspiration sent down to him by his benevolent creator. If you still doubt his testimony, then meet his challenge. He is made to say, Say, if the whole of mankind and jinns were to gather together, to produce the like of this Qur'an, they could not produce the like thereof. Even if they backed up each other with help and support. Holy Quran, Surah Bani Israel, Chapter 17, Verse 88 The world is challenged to produce a book like the Holy Quran and has not produced one in 14 centuries. The Arab Christians, who boast a population of 15 million today, not to be outdone, have produced the Christian Gospels in Quranic style. They have plagiarized the Holy Quran by stealing words and phrases, and even the style, not forgetting the Bismillah. Every chapter of their most modern invention begins with the first verse of the Quranic revelation. You have to see it to believe it. Here is a photostat of their new man-made revelation. Here is another proof if proof was needed that the Qur'an is inimitable. Try as you might, the challenge still stands. The Holy Qur'an is God's word, revealed to Muhammad wasallam, And it is the miracle of miracles. And a miracle indeed it is. Reverend Bosworth Smith End of chapter 6 End of part 4